Hey guys! So, after Will came back last week, you know, we thought he did a pretty good job, but, you know, our Not standards have really reached a higher level since he's been away. So we took him out back and beat the crap out of him and put him in a dumpster. Um, then I took him back out and beat him up some more. Yeah. Threw him back in the dumpster. That's right. You know, a smaller dumpster. Not as large. It was very, yeah, it took a little bit, um, but it was worth it. Um, so he's been relegated to his own video again. Um, it is the special Marvel Now, Now, Again, Now? No, just now. Just now? Just now. Okay, now. Um, more Marvel stuff, uh, because there's a crap load of things starting this week uh, in the wake of Civil War. Um, yeah. But yes, we have other things to talk to you about that are a bit more important than the wake of Civil War. They are sex toys. That's right. You really sometimes need a very good reference for sex toys and relationship advice in general. Erica Moen, who is a self-produced uh, cartoonist for many years now at this point, uh, really, really great lady, phenomenal uh, uh, cartoonist, does very, very, very funny stuff um, about her relationships, about sex. Uh, she started... Um, uh, uh, her relationship being into girls and then boys and then eventually married a man. Um, so it was a really great, uh, well-rounded perspective uh, uh, on relationships and sex life here brought to you by her and her husband, uh, Matthew Nolan. We have volumes one and two, Oh Joy Sex Toy. Um, you're really not going to find a better resource or, you know, nicely drawn uh, reviews of, well, probably a lot of stuff that I don't even know if I can say on this video. So we're just going to leave it at that. Um, Erica Moen is funny, funny woman, though. Very, very great stuff. And plus, like, a lot of things in the book, those books are thick. Um, speaking of thick in quality, at least, and quantity here, we have two new chapters for Batman Night of the Monster Men. This is parts four and five in Batman and Nightwing. Uh, the last issue of Detective Comics saw both Nightwing and... Uh, Gotham Girl turned into Monster Man. Oh my god! What'll happen? Man well, bitch! Seeing as their respective books are continuing past this crossover, I think it's safe to say they'll get better. But isn't the journey what really counts? Um, also the sure. art. You know, Riley Rossmo is no pushover. And this guy that got, uh, drawing Nightwing right now. Who's um, doing that? Roge Antonio. He does a real good Batman here. Cool. Yeah, cool. It's looking great. Also, it's kind of a Pat Gleason face, right? There. It is totally a Pat Gleason face. Um, continuing the thick vibe, I bring you a thick comic. Thick vibe, really? The thick vibe, really? That's right? Yep. I bring you a comic wow. that is not only thick in size but story and art. <coughs> Andrew McLean's Head Lopper. Colors by Mike Spicer on most of this. Uh, this contains the four quarterly issues that came out this past year, including two uh, extra stories and epilogue in here that's new for this book, uh, and some great sketchbook stuff. Um, story is about Norgal, who's a very thick, thick man that carries the thick sword, um, walks around and chops heads off of things, hence Head Lopper. We're not trying to overthink this. Simple is better, always. Um, but really, Andrew McLean has done something special with this. I don't know what it is. I mean, it's not like that the story is is overtly, you know, unique, or even that the art isn't anything that we've seen before. Um, but he is able to encompass his style with such confidence and such, I don't know, energy um, that it really reminds me of some of the, 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 what I really liked about Mike Mignola's early work, the best of Conan, um, it's just, in a lot of like cool supernatural stuff, it's got witches, it's got swamp bogs, it's got deception, it's got royal uh, treachery, all sorts of great stuff in here, really, really amazing, fun, adventure kind of fantasy comics, and that's what they are, it's just fun comics, like straight up, and for $20, I mean, you can't say no to fun, what do you, you don't like fun, I mean, come on. Of course not. What are you, what are you, what are you Morgan? Oh, come on, God. Wow, come on, I, I love fun. Like, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I really, really, really liked fun. And you know what was awesome and a lot of fun when I was a kid? Hmm. Going to the supermarket. Going to the comics section. Right next to the comics section, they had those little vending machines with, like, all the weird plastic junk, like, some weird rings and, like, fake hillbilly teeth. And also, small rubber... Urban elements called homies. That's right. Homies is a comic book now. 
from uh, Dynamite Entertainment. This is the first issue of David Gonzalez, Ed Elliot Serrano, and Andrew V. Huerta. Huertas. Huerta. Homies. I never, ever, ever, <laughs> ever, ever in my life thought I would be saying that Homies was the best looking title on the racks this week, <laughs> but it is the best looking title on the racks this week. Andrew Huerta <laughs> is no joke, man. Like, the guy does not do very much, if any, like, really widely published comics work, yeah. but, like... Unfortunately. He's a prolific commission artist on the internet. Um, he did, like, the most ripped Sub-Zero and uh, Scorpion <sighs> ever. Yeah. Like, ever sometime last year. He's yeah. all over Instagram. Dude's amazing. He's done some of the best of the recent swath of Luke Cage fan art. Um... But he was tapped to do the comic adaptation of Homies. Because apparently Dynamite is so desperate for properties to license that they chose Homies. And you know what? It works. Dude, you know how much money Homies made? A lot. A whole <laughs> lot. A lot of money. But I don't know who was beating down the comic shop doors asking for a Homies comic. Andrew Huerta? Well, maybe. I think he was just beating down doors asking for jobs. Probably. But <laughs> all that matters is this is here and it is freaking awesome. We only right. got a few copies, so you better show up fast. That's right. Um, and uh, kind of, oh my god. Oh, that? That was, Sarah Mierda! Uh, I mean, oh, you know, wow. uh, um, yeah. Anyway. Wow. Uh, uh, Lucha uh, Underground's awesome. You should probably right? watch it. <laughs> uh, DC continues his Young Animal line, uh, he headed by Gerard Way. And we see the second release after a couple weeks ago, Doom Patrol. Shade the Changing Girl. That's right, you're doing a little gender swap on the Shade to Changing Man, Steve Ditko's amazing creation uh, that Peter Milligan totally turned on his head upside down, spun around, and dropped some more acid onto it uh, in the early 90s. Thanks right, what's to, more potent, Ditko acid or Milligan acid? You know, that's a heavy qu question, man. I don't know. I mean, you got 70s acid versus 90s acid. I mean, I don't know, dude. That's... Yeah, and plus you had Chris Bacalo turning in some amazing art on the early 90s mm -hmm. on that Shade of Changing Man. Um, but uh, Cecil Castellucci and Marley Zircone bring you the new adventures of Shade of Changing Girl. And right off the bat, we're starting with Psychedelic Animals and Balloons. Looking like we're moving in the right direction here. Um, I'm pretty excited. I love Shade the Changing Man. Um, he might look to you like uh, James and the Technicolor Dreamcoat or whatever that dude's name Dave, was. David? I don't uh, remember. I don't know. I don't remember. Joseph? Joseph that one. That's right. Yeah. Um, I prefer like the Venture Bros dude. version with the Technicolor Nightmare Coat, but that's oh, just me. That's, well, Venture Brothers, everything is better. Um, oh. But anyway, Vertigo is definitely making a stand. And oh, crap, dude, there's even a uh, backup by Beto in here. Oh, what? Whoa, cool. That's awesome. Very, very cool. Gilbert Hernandez backup. Who um, also has a new book out this week. That's right, which we can't really it's talk porn. about. Yeah, we can't really talk it's, about it either. It's still porn. It's that's still all small, he does anymore. Small and porn. Um, but yeah, really excited for this. Doom Patrol was quite cool, um, so I'm hoping that Gerard Way and company uh, can bring back a little bit more of that 90s Vertigo vibe. Okay. You keep saying vibe. That's right. Stop saying vibe. Vibe. Um, my next book for you here from Aftershock Comics. Warren Ellis kind of snuck under the radar there Good. and launched a new series with them along with Phil Hester. This is Shipwreck. Um, Phil Hester is looking better than he has in, like, ten years, honestly. Um, he's also stuck a lot to writing in recent years. He did, uh, Mythic with John McCrea oh, and, uh, sure. a couple other books recently. And this is the tale of an enigmatic, uh, wanderer who washes up on the shore of a small town, wanders into, a like, a deserted diner, and then suddenly meets a man who apparently knows every single thing about him, but won't tell him every single thing. Sounds like a Warren Ellis comic. And then he shows up in the back of a kitchen with a cute girl who's chopping up humans and cooking them. Um, it gets weird. Whoa. It's All right, very, then. very, very, very strange. But, like Casey said, it's the first issue of Warren Ellis comic. Did you expect anything less? Yeah. Um, speaking of, well, I don't even know if strange is the word. Um, in your face awesomeness might be the word. Uh, finally, finally, Benjamin Mara's more underground work, I guess, has been collected from Fantagraphics in this nicely purple tinted, purple inked, red bound, and very yellow here little book called American Blood. Ben Mara, if you don't know, is a gangster. Straight up art gangster. Like, we have a picture that should be coming across. That's right. Just kind of process that. 
Yeah, that's real. No, we didn't Photoshop it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yes. Um, he's most probably well known for Gangster Rap Posse, which is the first book in here. Um, also, uh, this has been did Blades and Lasers, um, Night Maureen Business, Dow, Night Business, all sorts of great things that are basically um, they look like trash art from the back alley of the 1980s cinema. Um, they look crude at first, but there is a true brilliance underneath it. This man is one that has producing some of the most pure, unabashed, badass comic bookery in the industry right now. In fact, I don't even know if you would call this in the industry. This is no. more like on the outside, getting it's at the finger, kind of kicking it some. Um, but this is is it's is yeah. You know kind of how we talk about how Johnny Ryan is almost like you're in the fifth grade drawing pictures in your Trapper Keeper? This is like eighth grade drawing pictures in your Trapper Keeper. You've put down the dick and fart jokes a little bit more, you've gotten a little bit better at the art, but you're still down with big swords and big fists going through people's heads. And dicks. There's a lot of dicks. Okay, involved. maybe there's some dicks. Um, anyway, definitely need to get this. 20 bucks. Ben Mara, learn yourself. Alright, and my final book for you here, Easy Sell. Image, number one, Azarello Rizzo Moonshine Bootlegging Werewolves. That's right. There we go. Do you need to say anything else? Look, that was probably the exact elevator pitch that Brian gave. Right? If he even had to give that whole right. thing. Um, that's, that's it. Oh. oh We've got yeah. this stack here of things. Hold on a sec. Whew. Oh. Oh, crap. Okay. Wait before you help. Go. Help! No! Oh no, God! No! He's gotta take it! No! Oh! Oh! Wow! Man! Oh. That's a lot of color. Oh man! Yeah! All right! You go, okay? Go on, you okay? Go on, go all right! On. All right! He has to take a moment. We're gonna let him pause. Oh! I want to pick that up again. Charles Burns. No, this is not new. Uh, this collects X'd out, Sugar Skull, and whatever one was in the middle, which I can't remember right now. Oh, the, the hive. hive! The Hive, thank you. Um, which is basically the three-story Tintin on acid, more acid, actually. Um, straight up Tintin on acid, complete with strange eggs. All three books that were in hardcover for 20 bucks each, you get all three for 30 bucks in soft cover. Mm. Smells really quite wow. good, same size. Uh, again, if you don't know what Charles Burns is, you really need to learn Ooh. yourself. That does um, smell good. Yeah, doesn't that smell? You can smell it from over here, man. Yeah, right? It's right? Wafts. Yeah. Um, but definitely really, really cool, really, really weird, um, and it's great to see his stuff in color. You should probably read on an empty stomach, though, like most of his books. That's right. Um, we're going to try to give again. me a hand with I'm this? Gonna, I'm going to help him out a little, see if we can get that okay. here. Okay. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Okay. All right. So, yeah. apparently the latest trend, so we've heard, color. coloring books. Adult coloring books, specifically. You have to make that distinction. Yep. These are not... Your 12 year old's coloring books. These are not your 5 year old coloring books. These are not your baby's coloring books. No, because these are coloring books with subjects like The Walking Dead, Rick Grimes' coloring book. Because there's enough Rick Grimes just to do his own. And it's all black and white. <laughs> Convenient, right? And by the hoary hues of Hogoth, as they say on the back of this. Oh, oh my Doctor god, they that? Yeah, dude, see. Woo. I know. Uh, Doctor Strange, you can get your magic occult uh, mysticism on before the movie comes out. Uh, possibly the most high art of all of these. A Dinosaurs coloring book by William Stout. Heck yeah, dude. That one might be for five-year-olds, because everyone loves dinosaurs. Well, yeah, right? But five nobody draws dinosaurs like this dude and Ricardo Delgado. Mm -hmm. Those two. Mm -hmm. um, and also, for you kids out there, um, and adults, kids at heart, um... Avatar, Last Airbender. You know the Masters, the amazing series. That's right. It is, everybody knows about it. And what do you need to do now? You need to color in Iroh. Because Iroh is very sad that you oh, haven't colored man. him in. No, it's you, been like 10 years, man. It's no. been like 10 years. Yeah. Iroh's been sad for a long time. Um, Mouse Guard coloring book with the amazingly detailed art of David Peterson. Not exactly easy to color, I guess. No, say. not really. <laughs> We're kind of getting you a challenge here. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, it's only fitting with adult coloring books, right. right? And for those of you down with the Scarlet Speedster, Mr. Flash, we've got probably all the Flashes in here. Um, probably a serious... Probably not Bart. Bart probably not. I love. Yeah, and a serious lack of Greg LaRocque art. But it does have big-headed Ross Andrew Flash. Can you ask for anything yes. else than big-headed Ross Andrew Flash? <gasps> no. Honestly, if they hadn't had that, they would have missed the mark so hard. It really would have. Um, and you know what? That's enough. Okay? Yeah. We know you need to eat, too. We need to eat, too. So come on in. Get some comics. Get some coloring books for you and the family. 
Um, and yeah, we'll see you guys next week, and make sure to watch Will's video too. Bye.